Hello, everyone. Welcome to the segment Middle East Programmability Strategy. My name is Mohammed El Hashmi. I'm a systems architect with Cisco. I'm leading the Middle East Africa Programmability Practice Lead. We are working with our partners and customers to achieve a business and operational advantage for uh, customers around the digital transformation or for their digital transformation journey. Uh, this is our team of practice leaders, five countries. Uh, a great team and they will be owning the country plans and they will be aligning with the channel and they will help our sales teams to achieve and close deals using programmability uh, for the, uh, you know, to bring more business value to our customers. We are glad to have our first DevNet partner specialization uh, for the region. It's Finsys Limited from uh, Kenya, Nairobi. Uh, this is our first, but not going to be the last. We have a lot of great companies coming out uh hopefully in 2022 and 2023 and uh, this is our strategy for uh, this calendar year and the next calendar year we're going to focus more around developing the ideas around you know design thinking use case uh, you know uh, identification of use cases building use cases and building more sales capabilities in terms of how to sell uh, programmability and how to make it part of uh, the sales cycle and help our customers go more into automation with net devops and devops operational models so watch this space that's going to be great for us uh, an exciting journey uh, for uh, for our for us and our partners uh, in in this calendar year and next calendar year we have a great team use case uh, abdul aziz saido he leads the west east africa uh, se team and uh, abdul aziz uh, this is a great case for a team uh, we always look at. So you have 100% DevNet certified team. Uh, I think you have around eight SEs in total, but you have a very short time to get them uh, you know, certified. So my first question is why 100%? Why did you focus on getting them all certified? Um, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, first things first, I mean, I had to look at um, the market transition and um, I had that belief that the next generation SCs in Cisco have to have that programmability skills built in them. And for us to have a, a differentiator like, towards um, other competition in the market, um, we have to have that skill set built in our SCs. Fantastic. And how did you motivate your team? Yeah, it, it wasn't easy. Um, like you mentioned earlier, I mean, the time, the time span was pretty short. Um, what I had to do first and foremost was to convince them that um, this is something they need. And the fact that most of them didn't have the programming background from, from the university, um, there was this apprehension that, goodness, it's all about coding. Goodness, how am I going to do this in the short time? So, I mean, I had to convince them during our weekly one-on-ones um, I have to make that persistent. I tell you when I'm in persistent for over two months, I bring that up every time. And one other good thing I did to heal that fear was um, I brought in use cases from GVE. Um, I had a workshop, I actually have two workshops from GVE. They saw some use cases that was um, was um, created by the GVE team. And I think that like helped them a bit to douse out that tension. And um, I made, um, this whole project smart, I mean, was specific, uh, measurable, achievable, um, realistic, and time bound. I mean, so that really, really helps too. And I eventually got one or two um, engineers who graduated and uh, who gave them tips. So that really made it easy for them. And um, um, it was a success story for us. And um, they're all pretty excited. So that, that got you, got the ball rolling for you. I think it's great to engage with the exactly. other teams and get, you know, uh, you know, get them excited. Uh, so did you yeah. see any after effect, like, you know, what happened after the team got certified? Did you realize that from a business uh, impact perspective? Um, so, so, yes, I, I would say yes to that because um, in talking to customers, that has really helped them. And um, so, I mean, it's like you have trained a trainer um, with, with moved this from just we running this as, as Cisco ICs down to the customer, customer environment. Customers have now embraced this and the impact is, is, is quite impressive with the fact that um, 
they've had a significant reduction in human errors on the network and that has reduced their network downtime and um, that has also helped them um, accelerate the digital transformation that um, has been a focus for most companies in this post pandemic era that we're in. And um, lastly, um, it has really helped in, 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 in um, disability and activities on, on, on the networks for our customers. Fantastic. Great case, Abdulaziz. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. We have some good use cases that help our customers adapt the new experience. And uh, one of those use cases comes from uh, our partner, Finsys, in Kenya, uh, working with Orange Bank. And Orange Bank wanted to have more visibility around their calling patterns, the, the, the uh, employee calling patterns, the customer callings, as well as drop calls, et cetera. So they wanted a lot of information and correlate information between contact center information, phone information, and uh, you know how much people spend on, on calls, et cetera. And they wanted to do some uh, analysis around this. They want to do more security and compliance. And they wanted to see the, all those uh, insights when it comes to this. So uh, Finsys went out and built uh, you know, some sort of a prototype for them to build a, uh, around this. And the impact was the, to, uh, around improving employee productivity, cost revenue optimization, and decreased phone use or, or abuse uh, with toll fraud. So that was a, a business challenge. And uh, the idea of that is reflected into a, a use case that our partner was successfully able to provide. The next one is an airport information kiosk. This is in one of the airports. It's a prototype, it's in the airport, and it's running uh, in, in multiple locations. It's not just a kiosk where you can just do wayfinding like you find in malls and other locations, but it has uh, you know, two things. One of them is the integration with AppSpace. AppSpace, our partner for digital signage, their cloud-operated model. Uh, it can be integrated directly with, uh, with our you know, WebEx uh, touchscreen boards. But the, here we have the phone support, the contact center. So if you're stuck, you want more information, you don't really walk to the information desk. Where you, what, you, what you can do is just you know, press the call button and a contact center agent with video and all the audio uh, capabilities uh, will be you know, popping up on the screen somewhere on the right or left side of the screen. And that's gonna you know, give you more guidance, as, et cetera. So that's, going, that's a great uh, you know, experience, if you will. And here we're focusing more on the experience, not on you know, the best of the breed. It's more about what is the experience for our, uh, our customers. Uh, so that's bringing a different experience level uh, for, uh, you know, for our customers. This one helped us uh, win a, a good deal uh, with an existing customer that's running Jabber. Uh, they've got more than 3,000 users, and those users have been using Jabber for the past five or more years. And definitely, they fully adopted Jabber, and very difficult to move from one application to the other. One of the key adoption uh, requirements were how to move the users, you know, chat rooms, their, uh, you know, spaces they're already created in Jabber, and move them, you know, as they are into a WebEx app. Uh, so we went out to GVE, the Global Virtual uh, Engineering uh, Community. Uh, and uh, they, you know, thankfully enough, they built code, they tested it for the customer and help us, uh, you know, to close the deal faster. That was one of the biggest gaps to move from one application to the other. And it was done using uh, this simple, but very effective uh, use case. So my key ask at the end is to please, you know, we're trying to get you excited. Uh, we want you to work with our partners. If you are a partner, reach out to our, uh, you know, uh, country leaders uh, so that we are, you know, to be part of our plan and help you achieve, you know, whatever uh, we, we see in that market. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope it was beneficial.